I, when I get these blanket email signatures, like, you know, I'm caught up in meetings all day. I won't be able to respond to you. It's like, dude, just tell me what you're actually at and I'll appreciate that. And I'll like, I don't care, but like, don't lie to me because you've now set the expectation drastically off course where I am going to go to the next person because I know that I can get instant satisfaction and gratis, you know, Gratisfaction, guys. I'm gratisfaction. Say, gratisfaction. You just coined a word. <laughs> I went for coined a word. Satisfaction and gratisfaction. gratisfaction. Dude, that could be gratitude a and satisfaction. Gratisfaction. Ooh. Bam. I might beat you to that Woo! one. <laughs> Today we have Bradley Flowers, who is a nationally recognized insurance agency owner and marketing enthusiast. He runs the day-to-day -day operations at Portal Insurance in Sutherland, Alabama. Bradley is co-host of the Insurance Guys podcast, and in 2019, he was a speaker alongside Gary V at Agent 2021. Let's jump into it, yeah. and the first question that I always like to, to ask people is tell us about yourself and uh, really tell us what you believe in, and I don't mean that in a religion or political yeah. or any sense, just you know, what you're passionate about. You know, um, so I was born in Atmore, Alabama, which is a small town, about 8,000 people, um, as a young kid, I was always very intrigued by advertisements and ads. I just, it was just something about it. I always, I remember I would get like, there was a local real estate magazine with house, with listings in it way before the internet. And I, I always, I remember I would get that ad and I would get that, that magazine. I would look at the ads. Um, so, you know, kind of from, from being a young kid, I, I was in, went to college, played golf. Um, and at, at 16 years old, I uh, told my dad I wanted to be an insurance agent because the insurance agents got to play the most golf. And, um, and so one thing led to the other, and I ended up in the insurance industry, and now I never play golf. <laughs> but, you know, our um, – so I have an insurance agency, independent insurance agency, Portal Insurance, and our internal purpose statement, our internal purpose is – our mission is to empower people through insurance – and that sounds kind of hokey, but I'll give you three examples how that plays out. Is let's say, you know, we do business with somebody, and um, we save them a thousand dollars. Well, that then may empower them to go buy dance lessons for their daughter, or let's say they're paying a thousand dollars more to go with us. Um, that may empower them to sleep better at night. Or my favorite is they get such a great customer experience from us that they then want to go pass kindness on and warmth and. And, and good things, good vibes to other people. Um, so I, I'm all about, like, I just want to empower as many people as possible. Sweet. On that referral aspect, I tell people that if you aim for the wrong target, you'll hit it every time. Mm -hmm. And I think that the reason a lot of people don't get referrals, no matter the industry, is because they're working with people that are not going to give them referrals. Why? Because they don't like the same things they do. They don't do the yeah. th same things that they do. So you know, they're only working with you for the transaction. And in their mind, it's, we're doing this. And then we're, you know, yeah. we did it. And I think for somebody that's looking to build a business that they life, or excuse me, build a business in life that they love, they really have to have that uh, referral aspect in it. And what, what you're thinking about something? Mm -hmm. what, what are you thinking well, about? It, it's an intent thing. Okay. Having the wrong intent or not necessarily the wrong intent, just a different intent. Mm. You know, if, if I go out and do, you know, I'll give you an example. We had a, uh, a giveaway we did in our office where we gave away some tickets to a concert, just something cool, like community type thing. And what, essentially what we were doing is we were, we were calling each person that entered and said, hey, we just wanted to confirm your entry, da 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 You know, by the way, would you let us quote your insurance, things like that. Um, and I had, I had two, two agents that worked for me. Um, one was getting a, lead, getting a hot lead every time she called, and the other person was getting hung up on and I said, your intent is wrong. The person who's getting all the leads, her intent is just to make a friend. And oh, by the way, let's do business mm. together. You're calling and your intent is to make a sale. So you're rushing through mm. the rapport building part. You know what I mean? I yeah. think it's an intent thing. And I think um, even with social media, you know, we kind of have this problem in every industry, but especially in my industry with people spamming people mm. on social media, you know like something like insurance, like my, your audience doesn't want to hear about insurance. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, and so, you know, we're spamming people. It's not, nobody wakes up and says, I'm going to spam a bunch of people today. What do they do? They wake up and they say, we're going to make a sale today. Mm. We're going to post something and make a sale. So, 
you said that, you know, you don't want your business, 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 all these different things on social media. What would you say is a good ratio of business to life, to community, to brand, to whatever it might be? Because we hear different things going out there on this and that. What, what do you believe in? You know, I'm for the, I am for giving too much value. Okay. And then never asking for anything. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, like I, I hardly ever post a solicitation or anything like that. Um, when I do, it works because I never do it. Got it. It works to the umpteenth degree, you know. Um, but, you know, I'm all for just, you know, reverse engineering the audience. And, you know, like starting, you know, one thing with, with Portal is we, we said, okay, a lot of insurance agencies are built from the inside out. In other words, these are our processes. This is how we do business. You're going to have to get used to it, Mr. Client. Well, then what happens? Then you, you do one of two things. You either, like, do business with a bunch of clients and it's just not, it's not a good mesh or you you have this ever, um, never ending struggle to find your perfect client. Instead, what we want to do is we wanted to start at the client and work our way backwards. Mm. So not from the inside out, from the outside in, how does the, how do most people want to do business with us? And then that's what we're going to do. What make, would you make sense? Yeah, definitely makes sense. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of people on here that want to get some things, and they want to change up their social medias. And, you know, they come to me and they go, hey, Jonathan, you know, we want you to help us with ads. That's what most people come to me for. Because they want that instant return. They want ads. And I go, do you want ads? Do you want followers? Do you want money? Do you want sales? What do you want? And then they tell me what they want. And I go, okay, this is what we're going to do. Before we jump into the ads, we're going to change up the way that you post, first off. We're going to change up the way that you talk to people because your ads even if they could work, they're going to do a lot better if you're not advertising and solicitating every single time. You're not doing all these different things. You can still, you know, advertise and promote your business. Just do it in a different way. Because if you have that commission breath on every single post, you know, it, nobody wants that. It's like you're throwing up on them every single time. So why are yep. they going to, why are they going to stay there? Right? Yep. What's something that you would do, or let me rephrase that. What's something that you see happening on social media outside of the just solicitating all the time that is a good thing that some people might be doing that you would recommend others to do more of. Meaning, let me give you an example. I told you about the uh, the storytelling process and how the brain works. So I advocate people to do that. What's something that you tell people they should be doing on social? I tell a lot of people they need to tell stories. Okay. You know, um, and I've said this a lot. Um, so me and my wife went to uh, the Jack Daniels distillery in Lynchburg, Tennessee. I'm not a whiskey guy, I'm more of a craft beer guy. And we went through the tour and they took you through how Jack made the, the whiskey and, and all of that. And, for, you know, they still do it that way today, just at a larger scale. And um, we got done and we met some friends at a party in Nashville uh, that had went to the distillery earlier that day. And the guy looked at me, he's like, do you just want to drink some Jack Daniels right now? I'm like, yeah, I kind of do. And it took me a little while to, to figure out what it was, but it was mm. the story, knowing what happened behind the scenes, how it's mm. made, seeing it. And I tell insurance agents, but everybody that show people the behind the scenes of your business, show them the good, the bad, and the ugly. Take them along for the ride. That's what a lot of people are doing well. Another thing that, that people are doing that they may not be doing well, but I like that they're doing is creating original content. I think... There's obviously a strategy in reposting and reusing other people's content. But, you know, for me, I always try to everything I post be something original that I created um, or that my team created. Uh, I think people stepping off the ledge of creating their own content leads them on a, on a path to, to, being, to creating very good content one day. Definitely. And I like that you said that you have to basically pull back the shades and show the good, the bad, the ugly, and everything in between because you're trying to resonate with an individual who thinks and acts and is constructed the exact same way as you. And if you portray yourself as this type of person, well, if you're perfect 100% of the time, they cannot resonate with that. Mm -hmm. If you're just selling houses 24% of the, or 100% of the time, they cannot resonate with that. What they can resonate is or with is a family man. They can resonate with somebody who is actually struggling. They can resonate with, I tried to do this, it didn't work, and we're gonna have to fix things out. And like you said, you're doing it now in a way where you're connecting through that story to where when you go and buy something, you just buy it. 
You know, if you you were going through the Jack Daniels tour, they weren't telling you every five seconds, by the way, do you want to buy a bottle? Do you want to buy a bottle now? Do you want to buy my cup? Do you want to buy my shirt? Do you want to buy my hat? Buy, 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 buy. They weren't doing that. Well, what they were doing, where they were pulling it back, they were breaking it down, Mm -hmm. and you envisioned yourself at some point a part of the story on, man, I wonder what it was like. I'm managing, wow, look at look at this, look at that, look at this. And I tell people that all the time. Once you can get them to envision how this works why it works, how does my family fit into this, you know, what is it going to be like in five years if we do this, just get them to start thinking, mm-hmm. well, guess what? They're, they're thinking about you. Yep. They're thinking about you. And, uh, you know, I think that's what your main goal should be is to just be yourself, to document all the things that you're doing. But I like to tell people too that social media is not your journal. Um, you know, like it or love it. I, I tell people it's not your journal. So if you don't want them to see something, that's fine. I get that. I'm not telling you to, you know, put every single thing yeah. on the line because I don't do that as well. But I'm I'm trying to get you to rehumanize the way that you do things because if you can do that, you can connect with people. The humanization of brands <laughs> is something that people don't talk about. No, you know, I know you know. probably saw the whole Wendy's Burger King yes. where Wendy's was just going off on Twitter. I think another one was, uh, I think it was a uh, a fish restaurant that, I'm not that, sure about that, that was it got in a, a war with PETA. Okay. On Twitter, but but the humanization of brands, even yeah. though that's a one single individual behind yeah. <laughs> that, but but because like I can talk to it, you know what I mean? Yeah. I think it's there's there's something to be said for that. Got it. And I think that it's very important that somebody goes back and listens to that because although we only talked about it for a few minutes, like it's so powerful. Like if that's all you get out of this, like it's huge and there's a lot of people just out there that are just doing things because they see others doing it. Um, it's not who they are. It's not what they believe in. It's not what they like. You know, I always tell people like the people on my podcast, I like people that are on my podcast because I like them. First off, I don't care if you've got a billion followers, but if I don't believe in what you believe in, we're not going to resonate. This is not going to be good. We just met and we can talk about some things that are alike because you're just like me. I'm, I'm not putting on a suit and tie just to put on a suit and tie. Right. I don't know if you wear a suit and tie all the other times, Christmas but every this day. is, this <laughs> is, I got my Dallas Cowboys yeah. polo on because I'm in yeah. Dallas, but I wear polos every yeah. single day. Well, you I, get I, what post, I, mean? I posted a, a picture <laughs> on Instagram yesterday of me wearing jeans uh. and, and I, and I, and I, so I kind of brief backstory. Um, I was with another insurance agency for five years and, and kind of a, I was running the agency kind of role, but I did not own it. Um, and I left in January and March of this year, open portal. Um, and I posted on Instagram yesterday and I said, and it was a picture of me at my desk wearing jeans on the phone, closing a deal that somebody caught. And I said, you know, I've not worn anything but jeans since the day I quit my job. And that's a little bit on purpose. I'm like, yeah, I want to yeah. see how long I can go without like having to wear khakis. And, um, I said, Oh, by the way, I've also closed more insurance in the first seven months <laughs> of 2019 that I did in all of 2018. Your client doesn't give a crap. As long as as long as you are comfortable in what you're doing and you take care of them, that's all that matters. Now, are there certain situations, meetings where you may want to dress up, throw a jack in the closet, that kind of thing? Absolutely. Um, and I had somebody comment, another insurance agent, and she said, I disagree. You know, I dress up and I think my clients appreciate it. And I said, hey, that is fine. That's not the point of this post. Mm-hmm. The point of this post is you do you. Exactly. You be authentically you and everything else will take care of itself. And you have to be you in every single aspect, whether that's on social, whether that's not on social, because guess what? They're going to meet you at some point Mm -hmm. and they're going to see how you dress. They're going to see how you talk. And let's say you do put on the suit when you meet them, right? Well, you're going to act a little bit differently. You're going to be uncomfortable. You're not going to be on your A game. You're going to be thinking yeah. about the suit. You're going to be thinking you would, would have been more like, comfortable oh, in the tie jeans. Looks like crap. You, you're like, going to. You're yeah. just not going to be there. So why would you set yourself up? Why would you set those expectations wrong? Yeah. Uh, and, and then you then you have actually no excuse at that point. And I think a lot of people set ex- expectations wrong. You know, 
if you don't want somebody to call you at 9 p.m., then don't say I work 24 7, 365 days of the year. I'm the best person and the best agent that's going to do all these different things. And then you don't answer your phone at 9 p.m. Because you just now told the brain that actually that person lied to you. So that is the reason why they call somebody else. If you tell them that, hey, on Sundays is my family day. I don't work. But if it's an emergency, you know how to get a hold of me and all my clients do. From these days, this is what I do. This is who I'm about. And these are the type of people I, that I work with. I would never have somebody call me at 11 and be like, okay, the guy didn't answer his phone. Let's call the next person. Like, just like you wouldn't do that with your doctor. Why? Because the doctor has already set the expectations. These are when I work. This is how I work. You know, I think it's crazy that somebody can call a real estate agent or an insurance agent and think drastically, uh, just have these misconceptions right away. And the only reason that they have them is because too many people have set the wrong expectations up. This is the reason why the disruptors come into the market and play those up because the agents are playing them up as well. Do you agree yeah, with that? I agree a hundred percent. I agree a hundred percent. And you know, it, it's it's one of those things that that you know we it, admitting when you've screwed up too is is another thing that I see a lot of insurance agents do. You know, I'll give you a prime example: getting binders to loan officers on time so a real estate transaction can take place. You know, we all have those moments where we're really really good at those, and we have all those have, all have those moments where we're really really bad. And and sometimes just admitting, you know, I, so our office the the if I had to, to break it down one thing we specialize in is is we are freaking good at the home buying process when it comes to insurance we 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 get binders on time we we expedite the process we don't make the client come in and have a 45 minute meeting with us we understand that every so there's a problem in the insurance industry when it comes to real estate in that the realtor the loan officer the appraiser the inspector the buyer's agent all have one goal what is that? To get to the closing table. And then you have this insurance agent over here who wants to meet with them about their auto and their life insurance. <laughs> and you got to come in and you got to talk to me and you got to meet the staff. Like, no. Like, so what we do is we align ourselves with the other parties and say, we are going to get you to the closing table. We can worry about all that other stuff after the fact. Um, so to back up, but sometimes we're not as efficient as we normally are. Instead of making up a million excuses, just be like, we just screwed up. And, I, and, you know, I do yeah. that all the time with my uh, my away signature. I tell people, if I'm on my wedding anniversary, I say, I'm away on my wedding anniversary. Thank you for allowing me to spend time with my wife. I don't say yeah. I'm away from the office. I'm busy in meetings. I'm doing all these things. Why? Because then you think I'm busy with meetings and I don't have time for you. Yep. But when I tell you that I'm with my family, I'm telling you that I'm on a cruise or whatever I am. Guess what? You're actually envisioning yourself. Man, I wonder what he's thinking. I wonder what he's doing right now. And when I come back and I do talk with you, like, how was the cruise? How did this go? You how did that go? You emotionally tied to it. It's, it's, it's yeah, great. Right. And, I, and I, when I get these blanket email signatures, like, you know, I'm caught up in meetings all day. I won't be able to respond to you. It's like, dude, just tell me what you're actually at. And I'll appreciate that. And I'll, like, I don't care. But, like, don't lie to me because you've now set the expectation drastically off course where I am going to go to the next person because I know that I can get instant satisfaction and gratis, you know, gratisfaction. I mean, gratisfaction. Gratisfaction. You just coined a word. <laughs> I went for coined a word. Satisfaction and gratisfaction. gratisfaction. Dude, that could be gratitude and satisfaction. Gratisfaction. Ooh. Bam. I might beat you to that Woo! one. <laughs> We're going to have to trademark it. Put, put the, put the documents together, man. We'll go out on stage out there and announce it to the We're world. We're doing gratisfaction. We're bringing gratitude and satisfaction back to business, baby. <laughs> wow, that was great. All right, I don't even know what I'm. We're where, completely where, off. Where, where am I going now? And now I'm like running down the wrong hill. Let's. Uh, I know your time is uh, valuable. I appreciate your time, and I know oh, absolutely that uh, you've got other things going on. For you know, you know, go ahead. You know, and one of the things too is like it's. I remember. When I first started in business, there's a local guy in our town that has a podcast and I wanted to be on that podcast so bad, like so bad. And because I knew like, not only would it be fun, but you know, I would get some exposure out of it, maybe some business. And, um, uh, finally went after about a year and a half, he asked me to be on it and I was on my way to do it. And my boss at the time was like, you got to come to the office right now. And I didn't get to do it. And so anytime I'm, I'm asked to be on a podcast, it like means a freaking world to me. Even though I have my own podcast, it means a world to me. So I appreciate it. Yes, thank you. Because uh, 
I just think that there's a lot of great people that just have to be heard by the right people in order to do great things. And, you know, even if you're in the exact same industry, which we're not, but even if we, we were like, we have to think that we do things differently. We think a little bit differently. We act differently. And, you know, there's somebody else that can connect with you on a, on a much deeper level. And should I put out my podcast and people connect with you and you guys do things? I'm like, great. That's the point of this. Like, I want you to connect with people that or like you, not in business, in life, you know, if you tell great jokes, like whatever it is, I was, you know, I tell all of my people, you know, thank you because somebody's going to listen to this and it can drastically impact the way that they think, they feel, they do things. And uh, that's what we're all about. So where can people find more information, connect with you if they have questions, if they want to, you know, just chit chat, or maybe they want the the behind the scenes detail on the Jack Daniels and where they find that. So, uh, (laughs) My, my favorite platform is Instagram. Um, I'm on Instagram as Sarah Land underscore insurance. That's S A R A L A N D underscore the word insurance. Uh, Bradley Flowers, pretty much anywhere else. Um, we have a podcast, an insurance marketing podcast, although it's more of a marketing podcast that leans towards the insurance industry a little bit. And in fact, we've we've interviewed a lot of a lot of real estate guys, including Jason Will. I think you recently had on. Uh, we interviewed. Um, the CMO for Movement Mortgage, uh, number one real estate agent in the state of Alabama, Ricky Caruth, who has a massive following on social media. But uh, that's the Insurance Guys podcast, and we are pretty much anywhere podcasts are. Sweet. You, you said that your podcast is mostly marketing geared towards insurance. Um, it sounds like the most boring thing ever. It's not. Not at all. I'm, well, I'm like, oh, now I want to ask five more questions. Well, and, and, and go right ahead. But, but you know, it's funny, in the beginning... You know, we, we had two options. We were like, okay, do we make this consumer facing, which is a super short term way to think because we're like, we're going to do this podcast and sell insurance from it. Um, the reason we opted to go the other way around and be industry facing and not consumer facing is we did not want Ambien to sue us for putting everybody to sleep. So uh, we, we decided to go industry facing with that. But, um, but, but yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. What's a piece of advice that you would give to somebody in marketing that's, I don't know, they can drastically impact the way that they're doing things or or, or is there a specific platform or trick or tip or hack or ninja move, which I don't really just like throwing out there. But if we're talking with marketing guys, what's something that somebody can do and take away if they don't listen to anything, they just jump to this last section What's, what's a piece of advice? Something I've been really big on lately. I have a lot of, a lot of people reach out to me from the podcast and they ask a question very similar to that. And, and the, the, the thing I'm telling them, I see this a lot. And honestly, nothing really gets under my skin more when I see a, a business page or a marketing page, someone that's pushing something and they're getting engagement on their post. They're getting comments and they're not commenting back. Mm. <laughs> and and a piece of it that people miss and we touched on it earlier with nobody says I'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna wake up spam people you know your goal should not be to i'm gonna make this post and i'm gonna sell something your goal should be i'm gonna make this post to create engagement your goal should be to garner engagement okay well if you're getting engagement and you're not engaging back you're like the equivalent of seeing someone you know in the hallway and you don't say you don't say mm. hello. I mean, it's that that is the whole goal is to get engagement. Those people engage with two or three posts. They go down the rabbit hole. The algorithm throws your stuff up even more because they're engaging with you, and then they buy the product. So if you're getting engagement and you're not engaging back, you, you're just you might as well just shut your account down. And 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 the the other side of that is I remember Bradley Flowers in 2013 that was getting started on social media, and I got three engagements. I got my wife, my grandmother, and my mom. And, or not my wife, but myself, my grandmother, and my mom. Okay. And 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 I remember just like like seeing like you know a local air conditioning company getting fifteen comments on their post, and I can't get one measly like, and and now they don't even com- comment back. Like if you're not going to do that, like so if we, even I even comment back to the spam posts. Oh. I even and I do something funny like thumbs up or no I'm good or something you know because if nothing else that's going to throw your content out to more people. Just like me. People yeah. tell me that I'm like, why are you going back and forth with him? I was like, I'm, I'm not. It's this is not an argument. We're just, I'm yeah. allowing him to keep talking to me. If yeah. he's gonna talk and he's gonna give me an extra ten comments, 
great, let's talk because I'm going to use that negativity or that spam to show people like, okay, you see this post right here? Like, this is what you don't want to do because this is a spam yeah. comment. Then they'll respond back like, how did you know this was a bot or this and that? It's like, bro, come on now. Like, look at the comment. Like, we know what you're doing here. You told me it was a pretty picture and it's a picture of my office. Like, or like, <laughs> you know, my notebook. Somebody but, died and they're like, great photo. And you're like, wait, what? A wait, wait, dude, wait, wait, wait. Oh man, I see that all the time. Of, I've had a couple of those bot companies reach, oh. reach out to me about, about working with me. Every and, day. And, yeah, and... and <laughs> And I've toyed a little bit with the auto liking. I still don't, I still don't use, I don't like it. Um, but like the auto comments, like that would be my worst fears. Like somebody die and then. That's what, that's why I'm like. Comment a smiley face, like, or something like that. But, but engage back with every single comment. Like anytime you get anything, engage back with it. Try to keep that conversation going. And engagement is the road that leads to the sale. That, that's how you get there. We're going to, we're going to end it with this. If there's one person dead or alive, that you can have lunch with today, who would it be and why? Oh, that's such a hard question. And that's the reason why we ask it, and we don't let you prepare for it, because if you do, you're not going to tell me the right person. Yeah. You know, probably, probably my grandfather who passed away 15 years ago. And why? Um, I've been told we have a lot of similar, similar qualities. You know, I like, that. um, I just think it'd be cool. I appreciate your time. I know it's valuable. Thank yeah. you again. Hey everybody, this is Jonathan Hawkins. Thank you so much for staying until the very end of this podcast. I definitely appreciate it. As always, make sure to reach out to me via social media at Jonathan Hawkins official. Send me a comment, shoot me a DM. If you have any questions, you can also comment below. Thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe below and remember who you hire truly matters.